Artillery Secret Level 5 Nagakuga's True Spare Shot and the Stylish Evade Reload. Welcome to my guide on the Safi Jiva Sticky Light Bowgun build in Mount China World Iceborne. In 2018 we used slicing, in 2019 we used spread, and in 2020 we will use sticky. What's up guys, Chris here and welcome to another very exciting video. This set is so awesome, I seriously recommend anybody that plays Iceborne to check this one out. It's insanely comfortable to play, very stylish and it destroys everything, even Elder Dragons. This is the third Safi build video I'm releasing, and to be honest, this one was by far my most time-consuming build video I have ever made. Easily over 20 hours of calculating, testing, and combining different skills and armor parts, and it was quite complicated to break down these builds to make sure I don't make any mistakes when recommending these. But here they are, these are the builds I was able to put together. A budget, a medium, and a pro build, which are the best for guiding lands, and then for non-guiding lands, a different medium and pro build. I will explain why I wanted to differentiate between Guiding Lands and non-Guiding Lands later in this video. The Pro builds are for everyone with max rare decorations, the Medium builds are for everyone with only rare single slot decos, but no rare 4 slot decos, and the Budget build is for everyone with no rare decorations at all. So no matter who is watching this video, you shall find the best build that you can make with the decorations at your disposal. I really recommend watching the entire video, even if you won't make all of the build variations featured, as I'm providing a lot of useful information throughout the entire video, and I made this video as short as possible. So let's take a look at our custom mods first, as these will be identical for all of the builds shown in this video. We are using a recoil suppressor two times. The big advantage of the Safi Jiva Aqua Shot compared to the Rajang Light Bowgun in terms of sticky usage is that we have lower recoil. Two recoil suppressors allow us to move freely while shooting sticky level 3, whereas with the Rajang Light Bowgun we used to have to stop moving because of the higher recoil, even though we also used two recoil suppressors on this bowgun. But not only the lower recoil Recall is nice on the Safi Jiva Light Bowgun. Additionally, we use two evading reloads. These allow us to auto reload two shots of our magazine every time we perform an evade reload, which is the stylish looking slide. It can be used after shooting or after placing a vibrant blast. This paired with the lower overall recoil on the Aqua Shot allows us to always stay in motion. This is one of the reasons why this build is insanely comfortable to play. For all the builds shown in this video, I have Rock City and Tempora Mantle equipped. However, you might change these to fit your personal preference. All right, let's take a look at the Guiding Lands builds. Our budget build comes with all the necessary skills and I'm super happy with how this one turned out. This is incredibly easy to make. All we need is 3 vitality, 1 brace, 1 attack and 1 fortitude and it's perfectly playable. I will quickly explain these basic skills and what they are doing. Health boost level 3 to make sure we don't get one-shotted easily. And mob level 3, this skill was not necessary with the Rajang Sticky Light Bowgun, but Safi has one-shot lower capacity. So with Safi, it will bring our Sticky level 3 and level 2 shots from 1 in the magazine to 2 shots. We need to have those 2 shots in the magazine to be able to use the Evading Reload level 2. Peak Performance level 3, it increases our attack value and we can very nicely make use of the skill considering we play ranged and also use health regeneration augmentations. So we will basically always have full HP. Artillery level 3, it increases increases our sticky damage. This is a must-have skill and it gives us 30% more sticky damage. I will explain the sticky damage cap later. Special ammo boost level 2. We definitely want to use our special ammo aka Vibrant Blast on KO'd monsters. Those mines are a huge damage dealer for us. I recommend always putting one or two mines down when you're close enough to a flinched monster. Make sure you don't plant too many at once in order to still have enough time to trigger all of the mines with sticky shots so you don't waste any of them. Fortify so we can die twice in the Guiding Lands to get 20% more attack. Flinch Free on level 1 allows us to place our Vivant Blasts without getting knocked down by most of the other player attacks. Why I chose level 1 is because it protects us already against the sticky explosions from other players. So if you're playing in multiplayer with multiple sticky users, the sticky shots are the most common source of interruption that you will be getting while placing those mines. And lastly, True Spare Shot. This set bonus skill is really good for sticky and gives us a 30% chance to recover one sticky shot. The remaining slots you can fill with up to 3 slugger decorations and more attack or agitator decos. Here it is important to know that affinity does not increase our damage with sticky explosions, but attack does. Critical hits don't affect explosions, no matter if sticky, cluster, shelling, impact files or vibrant shots. In fact, that is probably why the artillery skill exists in the first place, to compensate for those types of damage that are not affected by crits. Here we are using 1 Nagakuga Essence and 4 attack awakened abilities. Our augmentations are attack increase and health reduction 
gen, which is super nice for an optimal uptime of our peak performance skill. Next up for those who can make it, this is the media build coming with rare single slot decorations, but no rare four slot decos. The difference with the budget one is here we are using three artillery decorations, then the three KO decos are optional, but definitely a recommendation. The advantage of this build over the budget one is that it comes with two Runa Giganta parts, which give us haste and recovery, so we don't need any health augmentations anymore, giving us one more attack augmentation. This build also comes with more attack and agitator skills. Lastly, the pro build for guiding lands. It automatically comes with a raid window level 3, which is quite nice to have, but the major difference here is that it has three Nagakuga parts, so we don't need Nagakuga essence in our weapon anymore, and thus have one more attack awakened ability. But this is only possible to make when we have two special ammo boost decorations. Additionally, three KO vitalities, three artillery, one fortitude, and one brace evasion. Instead of this one, a normal brace jewel does the job just fine, but as you can see, this one is definitely quite challenging to make. But even if you can't make this one, you will be more than fine using the medium one as well. Now, that covers our three guiding lands builds. But some of you might be asking yourself, why no artillery secret? This set bonus skill from 3P Sora gives us artillery level 5 and thus 20% more sticky damage than with artillery level 1. But here's the thing, Capcom implemented another cap in Iceborne, the sticky damage cap. And I'm being honest, I'm not really a fan. I think limitations should come with weapons and skills themselves, and the game should not just cap us like that. It's just a game! Because what do we do all this grinding for? What do we do all this farming decorations for if the game just caps it at a certain point? It makes it very anti-climaxing and very demotivating to me to make better builds if the game just caps me at a point. It's, about, it's the competitive nature, bro. It's about respect, bro. It's about pride. For those unfamiliar with the sticky damage cap, let me explain it quickly. There are two different methods to increase sticky damage. Method number one is to increase our attack value, which influences the damage that the explosion to the sticky shot is doing. And method number two is to use skills that also increase the explosion damage from sticky shots. There are two skills, artillery and the Filan Bombardier food skill. Now artillery level 5 gives us 50% more sticky damage and Filan Bombardier gives us another 20% more damage. If we were now also to stack as many attack skills such as Fortify, Peak Performance, Agitator, Mighty, Demon Powder, Hunting Horn, Evasion Mantle and many many more, combining these with artillery level 5 and with Filan Bombardier would be a total overkill and we would definitely hit the cap very easily. Artillery level 5 in particular makes it really easy for us to hit this cap, which we obviously don't want. Ideally we want to get as close as possible to the cap but then use other skills to improve the build overall and not put even more fuel into the value that gets capped anyway. How high the sticky damage cap is primarily depends on your weapon base attack value which is just the bare bones base attack of the light bowgun with its attack augmentations and in case of Safijiva the attack awakened abilities count towards the base attack as well. So this will influence how high the cap of our sticky damage will be. So what does it mean for us? How are we going to make those builds knowing that there is a sticky damage cap? In this case artillery secret is useful when we cannot or do not want to activate fortify. See fortify is a pretty strong skill too when it gives us 20% more attack and thus heavily increases sticky damage as well. So together with artillery level 5 this is kind of an overkill and easily hits the cap. However if we're not playing in the guiding lands for example doing Safi Jeeva or investigation quests we cannot necessarily always die twice in order to get more sticky damage because it brings the entire team at risk possibly triple carding. We want to be able to deal the max damage and play safely at the same time. And in this case, we're not going to play with Fortify and instead use Artillery Secret. And that combined with eating for Filan Bombardier and with those few attack skills and peak performance and that automatically come with the Nagakuga and Rune Nagiganta armor parts and items like Might Seed, Demon Powder, additionally, we get a really good amount of damage increase factors to barely hit the sticky damage cap but not totally waste any damage. I know it sounds kind of complicated but I hope you guys know what I mean. You know, all in all, it brings us to a very nice setup using either Fortify or artillery secret. And this is exactly where those two new builds are coming in. These are for non-guiding lands. Or in general, every one of you guys who just wants to use a build without having to activate Fortify all the time. For example, me. <laughs> I don't want to use Fortify all the time, sometimes it's just more chill to just literally just use the build without having to die twice and also when I'm playing with randoms for example, imagine I'm joining their session in the Guiding Lands and I'm just carding twice at the very beginning, what do they think of me and I have TDS in my literal Monster Hunter name so it might sh reflect a bad light on TDS. God damn it, I didn't think this through when I was naming my character guys, I, it's really bad. 
there will be no particular budget at tier level 5 build because using Sora 3 piece does require a few rare decorations no matter how you twist it. So if you cannot make the medium or pro build that we're going to take a look at now, then just use your budget build for non-guiding lands as well. It will work just fine and still has the essential skills. This is our non-guiding lands medium build and it comes with very similar skills but at tier level 5 and no fortify. Here we're using 3 Zora parts for that set bonus and it requires us to have 2 true shot jewels 1, which are probably the most difficult part about this one. 2 artillery, 3 KO, 1 attack and 3 vitality. This one again has 1 Nagakuga Essence Awakening ability and 1 Health Regeneration Augmentation since we cannot make use of Haste Recovery here. This medium build is really good considering you don't need any of these 4 slot decorations. Can you stop making this noise when I'm recording a video, please? What is this? Germany! Germany sucks! I don't- I'm sorry, Germany. I'm gonna lose my mind. And lastly, this is our pro build without Fortify. This has the same frame of armor parts as the medium one, and also the same augmentations and awakened abilities, but with max out the decoration so that we have more attack points because we have two KO vitality decorations here. But you see, it's not really a big difference. Now, before we wrap up this video, there's a few important things to say. Make sure you always eat for feline bombardier if you can. You will also want to keep your farm busy with cultivating all those blast nuts because you will need a lot of those blast nuts recombining all the sticky ammos doing the quests. Speaking about sticky level 3, definitely use the level 3 stickies first as they have a higher damage output than the sticky level 2s even though the sticky level 2s can be shot with rapid fire. So sticky level 3 you will have a lot of them, you can recombine them as well after you run out of those sticky level 3s and then proceed to sticky level 2 once you're completely out of level 3. Dude, this video took much longer to make than I originally expected but I'm really happy with how it turned out and hopefully it helped some of you guys making better builds. I think it's very organized nice and structured as always. Um, definitely let me know in the comments if you want to see some uh, changes, how you liked the new format with me showing myself on the camera as well and kept kind of keeping the same content, just putting myself sometimes in there. Um, definitely let me know in the comments. I'm really excited to see what you guys think about this. And um, I do want to say one more thing, which is basically if you see other players um, with worse builds on online or something, maybe tell them there's a video on YouTube that they might want to check out. I'm just saying this as a YouTuber because I have a little bit of a responsibility. I really don't want to endorse or support any elitist behavior. And I think some people take those kind of build videos to talk bad about other players, which we shouldn't be doing. Anybody can play whatever they, they want at the end of the day. And so I think that's that's what how we should see it. That had to be said. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Stay tuned because way more uh, Safi build videos are coming as Safi Jiva will release on PC. I think a lot of people will uh, ha find those very helpful. So we will keep them coming. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace. So are you gonna die today? It's just a game. Like, I'm gonna lose. Like, are you kidding me? You're so stupid.